John. Hey, Sasha, how you doing? Good, how are you? What, Great. Good what, are you. You, what are you doing? Well, I'm trying to gather neutrinos of success. And if I get enough of these, I think maybe we can begin to look at what works in impact investing and try to get some more commonality between our practices. Great. What, <laughs> uh, what, so, do, you, what do you mean? Well, so I think you know, we, we did the report on um, impact capital, coordinating impact capital. And uh, one of the things that we were focusing on is uh, you know, how, in fact, different uh, sources of capital could pass the baton. The other thing we noticed is, hey, somebody's moving the goalposts. The impact investors who went in with a three to five year time horizon are coming back and saying, gee, we really think that it's more like seven to 13 years. And I think that has some unintended consequences with, uh, with what we're doing. So uh, what I want to do is to extend a little bit more into the fabric of how do we get a more grand unified theory, or in fact, better yet, a series of rules or practices that encourages better coordination between impact capital sources. So one of the things that we talked about was, look, if an MRI, meaning a mission-related investor or a program-related investor, went in to uh, extend some of their milestones so that they better prepared their grantee for the next phase of capital, then they would approximate what you actually encounter in the universe of venture capital investing, which are ready pools of up-round equity capital waiting for winners to emerge from the previous round. And I think those kinds of forces are what we need to bind a little bit better. But I also thought your commentary about uh, the role, the expanded role of philanthropy is terrific because that blueprint to scale report that you guys put out was quite a, a compliment to uh, the one that we had already released last year. Well, thanks. And, um, you know, uh, Catherine Fulton talked about this a little bit yesterday, and we'll go into it deeper in the session today. Um, but I'm sort of struck by Majora's moving talk. And, you know, I've been trying to think, as this report came out in April, the simpler and simpler way to sort of summarize what it says. And I think in its simplest form, it says something that practitioners know, which is that this work is really hard, that building businesses in these environments is costly and has a lot of turns and a lot of twists in the road. And what really struck me, listening to Majora, is I think that at this conference, for a number of years, we've been talking about whether or not we're creating an asset class. And when I listen to someone like Majora speak, I hear someone talking about solving problems. And I think that those are two pretty different undertakings. And if you keep your eyes focused on the problem, you're going to come up with a whole uh, diversity of solutions. Versus an asset class, you're going to come up basically with funds and fund structures. So I think that this is our chance to shift the conversation. Terrific. So one of the things I think about is, you know, are there lessons that we could pull or perhaps ignore from venture capital? And, and the first observation I make about that in terms of creating some of these natural forces for for change uh, is that, you know, you look at the process that we have in impact capital and there are big gaps. When I look at the process in venture capital, there are a number of very strong binding properties. They are looking for uh, impact uh, for, you know, or at least places to, to uh, invest, very local. They syndicate locally. And the product and service that is the outgrowth of that investment is actually global in scale. We are almost the exact mirror opposite of that in that we source our, our opportunities remotely, we, we look for our syndicate partners globally, and the impact is usually on a community or regional scale. And so making up for some of those, the lack of forces there are, are that we, we don't enjoy in impact capital, and as you say, it's, it's a tough job. I often uh, tease my venture capital friends that they have it easy compared to impact capital. So when I think about uh, equity, I also think about perhaps it teaches us a little bit of the wrong thing in that it's reflexive, it's like muscle memory. And when we construct our portfolios, we're looking perhaps too far ahead in our expectations, looking for a 10x, assembling a 10x, uh, return on every single investment that we make, and it ends up screening out the wrong kind of invest, uh, investment. Very solid social enterprises. Don't you see the same thing in fund construction? Yeah, I mean, I think what, what, you know, I would just add to that, the investment, you know, what I've really learned from you, John, is a lot about um, what kind of products do we need to put in, what kind of investment products do we need to be kind of the standard for the space? 
And I think when I take a, a broader view of why the space has kind of evolved the way it has, it has a lot to do with um, the characteristics of funds themselves. And we were talking a little bit yesterday, and Anthony Buglevin uh, started off our panel saying, uh, with the Blueprint to Scale panel, saying that one of the things that our sector is trying to do is buck the notion that there's this bifurcated worldview whereby you either have philanthropy or you have investment capital, and kind of lo and behold, the synthesis of those two opposing worldviews is impact investing. And I would posit that we're really not there yet. And you know, our experience at Acumen and just talking to our peers in the space, when you go in to talk to a potential LP, they very quickly want to put you in one of two buckets. And I think as a sector, we still actually have that bifurcated worldview where it is either philanthropy, and we've been talking in the report about a better kind of enterprise philanthropy, or it's investment capital with basically a tweak around the edges that says, maybe I can lower your return a little bit, maybe I can think about the time horizon a little bit differently, rather than actually saying, what are the focal points of types of funds that actually get us impact? What do we mean by that impact? What are the returns that you can reasonably respect to get if you're gonna get that impact? And I guess what I'd like to see happen is an honest dialogue and conversation, not only observing that this is really hard, but then both fund managers trying to raise funds, uh, people are innovating around fund type, and even LPs coming to the table and saying, you know, we're not going to get new results with kind of these old traditional private equity fund structures. And I think what we have in the report is the observation of what the characteristics of this sector look like 10 years in. What I think I would love to see is more LPs looking at that and saying, hey, wait a minute, if that's the case, then we can't approach this in the same way in terms of what we expect our capital to do. So is this sort of LP activism? You know, <laughs> one can always dream. Uh, I, I think that what we need is people to step forward, and I think the challenge right now is the people with the really, really big balance sheets are kind of waiting for the uh, activists, if you will, in this room to come up with new ideas, and I think the more that people can meet in the middle, um, I think it's very difficult for someone who wants to kind of raise a new fund to just come up with something brand new and have a real serious conversation with LPs. And I think the reason is because we can't yet talk about impact as clearly as we can talk about returns. And it's much safer and much easier to feel like you've got rigor around returns as if that's gonna kind of buy you the whole thing. Exactly equation. right. So it's why I start thinking about uh, how, what do we do for alternative forms of investment. One of the worries that I have is there's not truth in advertising here. And that uh, if I'm a financial physicist for impact capital, what I want to do is to, to look at an equation and solve for X, where the equation is equity is to venture capital as X is to impact capital. And the reason why I don't think that equity is the answer for impact capital in many instances is because it's a promise that the entrepreneur cannot keep. They don't have ready-made IPO markets. And if selling their company is the only way that they have to pay back their equity investor, it's a promise they don't want to keep because they lose control or, or are disenfranchised from their effort. So I think that finding alternative forms of investment capital that help create a more uniform or help better match the true experience on the ground for social enterprise is exactly where we need to go. And I'm hoping that that's uh, also some of the activism that the limited partners look at, and that we could be a little more sanguine about what are the true rates of return that we can expect, and, uh, and do those instruments encourage round trip of capital reliability over alpha? Yeah. Well, I think this is, you know, the next few years, I think, it is, I think it's an important time for our sector. I think my mic might be off, there we go. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I think it's an important time for our sector. I think we have more information than we've ever had before, and what I'd like to see is that new information actually leading to new action. And I think it can happen at every level. It can happen in the conversation between the investor and the investee, between the investor, uh, the fund manager, if you will, and their limited partners, and to really look honestly at this ecosystem and say, hey, we have space for all of these things. We have space for more aggressive returns, and we have space for more aggressive impact. And to acknowledge that sometimes those things are gonna go hand in hand, and sometimes they're gonna be actual and real trade-offs. And I think the sooner we can have those conversations, the quicker we're gonna move. So. And we're gonna start this afternoon. Yep. We've got a great session. It's a panel discussion that will analyze or look at a number of different facets of this topic. It will also look at the promise and if term sheets are the contractual uh, uh, instantiation of the promise between investor and social enterprise, then we're going to look at that promise in a, in a much different way. Uh, we're hopefully going to co-create some of those uh, answers. And then we have a real treat for you, uh, brought to you by the Campbell Law Group. 
which is uh, an automated term sheet generator. So hopefully everybody can join us at 2.45 in the fleet room. And with that, Sasha, I'll Great. see you at our lab this afternoon. Take care, man. All see right. you. Thanks.